Hello everybody, whether you're a Solomon Kane backer, whether you're a fan of the Mythic Games Facebook page or YouTube channel, very much welcome to this video where we are celebrating the 100th What's Up Wednesday. That is our regular weekly update for every one of our games and in particular today we're talking about the 100th update for Solomon Kane. We've been doing these every single week since the campaign started back in June last year. And um, so we kind of thought we'd have a little bit of a sit down. Well, I wanted to have a bit of a sit down. I, I just said I would disrupt. Good idea. <laughs> I would disrupt the development team. I would get Jack in and all the guys that have been working on Solomon Kane and ask them a few questions, have a bit of an insight into what they've been working on because the game really has come on a long way. It has, uh, yes. <laughs> since the campaign finished back. In, finished back at the start of July last year. So we're coming on 11 months now since the kind of development really kicks out around and development went into full flow. Absolutely, yeah. Um, so yes. I guess I'm going, to, I'm going to ask you, for anyone that doesn't know, if you're watching this and you haven't been following Sol McKean, who are you? What do you do? Who am I? <laughs> Why am I here? Um, my, name is, my name is Jake Thornton, mm -hmm. and I'm a lead game designer for Mythic Games. Uh, I run a team of game developers who you will be seeing shortly, or at least you'll be seeing some of them shortly. If you follow our What's Up Wednesdays, you'll be familiar with most of them anyway, because they, they all take turns writing the different updates for do, this do. and for Right Busters yeah. and for and so on. So you, um, you, you'll, you'll meet them and, uh, in a moment. Cool. Well, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to let you off the hook for once. Normally, of normally I, I am a bit forgiving to Jack because he's an incredibly busy man looking after normally not just Solomon Kane, but, but Right Busters, you're looking after Super Fantasy yeah. Brawlers, and you're overseeing as well. Lots. Plus, look at uh, proofreading Joan of Arc whenever we throw it onto your desk and say, please, please give us your thoughts on this. Uh, and so, I'm not going to let you off the hook. I'm going to hit you with a couple of uh, more managerial serious questions. I okay, guess, serious, so, serious questions. Yes, so tell me, what's it been like leading such a massively big project like Solomon Keane? It's, uh, it's, it's quite amazing, really, because it is surprisingly big. It's one of those things where I don't think any of us really yeah. realised quite how big it was going to be. Um, I've been very fortunate to have a really good team who have just dug straight into it and who have kind of taken it on and, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, sort of made it their own. Yeah. Um, and, and so a lot of the details, a lot of, I mean, we, we have lots of sessions of throwing around ideas mm -hmm. and, and batting things back and forward and lots of the time, I mean, it takes, it, it, this can be quite a bruising and sort of difficult process mm -hmm. if you have the wrong people. So I'm very lucky that we've got a really yeah. good team and we can have all of these incredibly complicated and, and sort of like, everyone has good ideas. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'll throw a bit of a curveball at you because I, I gave Jake a little bit of an idea of what I was going to ask him, but I'll see what you think of this. Because obviously, people at home look for things like replayability. They yep. look for things like being able to go through stories multiple times. And we yep. knew from the get go that with Solomon Kane, we wanted to have these diverging paths, these yep. diverging narratives where you could explore your decisions. Sometimes you'd get easy decisions, sometimes it would just be the result of your actions or yep. how well you did. So, from a playtesting and development point of view, is there any kind of big successes, is there any big challenges you had there? Uh, well, one of the things that I mean, one of the things about that is when we when we're doing uh, when we're playing this, you may want you know the the backers want to replay ability and so on, and and that's obviously as game when when I back something, I want to be able to replay yeah, it and so on. Absolutely. But we need it to be replayable because while you might want to play something three, four, five times, we've been playing it fifty, sixty, <laughs> eighty, a hundred times, so. We've got to have something where we're not getting completely bored with yeah. with the you know having played this mission and then we tweaked it and then we played it again and then we tweaked it a little bit and then we played it again and then we <laughs> moved the setup of that guy by one area and then we played it again and, yeah. and so on and so on and because we've got these diverging paths and because we've got the game modes and I think the game modes really help here as well you can play solo you can play the other way solo there's two different solo modes which feel quite different you can play with a darkness player or without a darkness player with two people and it's not the same as mm -hmm. with four and so on and then we, you can play the same scenario and take different paths or you're lucky or you're unlucky in different ways or you make different choices and and so there's an enormous amount of replayability uh, and and I think that that is one of the one of the really cool things about it and it's it's for us it's great because we don't go crazy when we're yeah. making the game. <laughs> so it sounds like it's been a, a bit of a, a broad challenge for you guys to really approach it this. It has. I, mean, I, I come into your room now and again in the office and I see your whiteboard's kind of like a crime detection. <laughs> there's just rows and rows of numbers on the board. Does this connect them to this? And there's pages and pages and pages of test cards that are being tweaked yeah. and edited. Because yeah. all the cards can potentially link stories and discussions That's, together. Yeah. 
would there be any techniques that you think that from your years and the experience, that anything you've kind of imparted onto the team to say we should kind of do it this way or this is how we should manage it or anything you would say? If you were going to do this yourself, if you guys had 200,000 words and evolving narratives. Yeah, I mean, th this is, it is huge and sprawling yeah. and so much of it uh, interrelates with, with each other. Inside an act, which is one of the stories, inside an act that is kind of self-contained, mm -hmm. But what happens in that act can reflect on the core rules yeah. and the balance of, of different abilities that the different virtues have and, and that whole kind of back and forth feedback loop between the individual acts and the way the core game works mm -hmm. means that then you, know, you, you play one, one act, you go through that, yeah. you tweak the core rules, then you replay another one that you played earlier that week and then it's slightly different because you've changed the core rules again. <laughs> then you kind of, and so there's an awful lot of kind of moving back and forward and we have literally thousands of cards yeah. so while some of them only are relevant to one particular moment within one particular story or even one down one path I mean some of the cards are very very specific because they're a signature moment mm -hmm. for some particular version yeah. of one of the stories that you may or may not you may never see it yeah. but some of them we use again and again some of the cards are, are, are repeated so it's kind of containing all of that enormous complicated mix yeah. you have to have a plan you have to have a, uh, a spreadsheets which much as I dislike them are something you need to track all mm -hmm. of this but you need to try and also have uh, a sort of contained idea of this is where we will go we won't do that mm -hmm. and just sort of basically just frame the whole piece because yeah. otherwise it, you just sprawl off into yeah. tangled so mess everywhere so having some kind of yourself. trying to <laughs> kind of yeah trying to kind of say well we we could we could go off and do this or we could go off and that it's finding a balance in a way because we've got the idea that we're we're trying to bring to life the the world yeah. of Solomon Cain and the ideas that uh, that Robert E Howard had and he's a lot of the what we did it were based on unfinished pieces mm, yeah and like, was there any of that that was particularly difficult because obviously we have well, some long stories some fragments some, some poems uh, well we have some things where where we I mean I made up some of them completely wow uh, but I was trying to I mean we had we had a few where where we've got we've got one or two that are complete he didn't actually finish that many there's probably more that he didn't finish yeah. than he did have you got an example of one that you had to do a lot of work on to, to well complete? well um one of them, one of them that was a start that he'd written, mm -hmm. that uh, that we've developed into a huge story, is um, is Death's Black Riders. Mm -hmm. Basically, in what Robert Howard wrote, Solomon Kane is is going down a, a road in the Black Forest in Germany, and this this rider approaches and then rushes past the enormous knocks him off his horse, mm -hmm. and that's it. Yeah. That is <laughs> that is the whole no, of what exactly of what Robert Howard wrote. Even. <laughs> it's not even a prologue. It's just there's a forest in Germany. There's a guy. He's in a rush, yeah. and that's kind of he's got a he's got a mask over his face, and you can't see who he is. Yeah. And, you, and you you could go anywhere. So we 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 did we we started with that, and he could be a ghost. He could be a brigand. He could yeah. be a, a messenger for the king. He could be <laughs> any one of a number of things. And then so we kind of went off in several of those different directions so that instead of saying it's this, you've got to do that, it's deliberately muddy. So rather than writing a single story, so you give the players the opportunity? We give the kind players of kind of, you know, well, what is it? You've got to work out what it is and, and, and find out what's really going on. And there's different views of the locals think it's one thing and maybe it's something else and maybe they were right in the first place. And, there's this thing, there's this rumor about something in the mountains, and, and, so, you, and so, it's kind of so you've evolved into the memory, oh, the, oh, no, the you, mystery. Sorry, you've actually said rather than just kind of saying this is how we think it should be, you've actually yeah. said let's think if that was happening at the time, how would the players and how would well, Solomon and how would the characters? Ab look? Absolutely, but you've got to you've got to compare this to what we do with the ones that are finished, mm -hmm. because when we've got a, a finished one, you've got uh, from from Robert's originally original versions, you, you've got the narrative that he wrote. Yeah. But that can't be the whole thing Absolutely. in terms of a game. In terms of a game, you need to say, what if the players want to do something different? And, and, and so the, we were talking before about kind of constraining this. So it's, a lot of this is about balancing the, balancing the mix of how much we can go off the path that Robert Howard had. Yeah. We have to do some of it because otherwise you're just doing what he said. Mm -hmm. But we have, to, we have to have that as one of the possible routes through the story is yeah. what was written. But we want to find interesting ways around that. We can go off and come back or go off and not come back. Some of them just diverge and never return to the original <laughs> thread. But they're all different. 
and the, the combination of um, of returning and, and, and leaving and, and is, is very, very different from different ones. So for example, in um, Rattle of Bones, <coughs> that's a very claustrophobic mm -hmm. story yeah. because it's set in, in, a, in a, an inn and pretty much kind of in one or two or rooms of an inn. Thing, yeah, the yeah, entire yeah. thing is one or two rooms of an inn. And so we've tried to make that quite claustrophobic. So actually the map in that is the same map repeatedly yeah. because you're just stuck in this one place trying to kind of get, you, get out of it. Whereas other, I mean, um, it's much longer, it's five acts, and it's the longest one we have is Red Shadows. That's on, f in four different countries. <laughs> so, so, so that's, that's so quite it's completely the, the other end of the scale. It's, it's completely the other end, but it, but it fits, because the death, um, that's Rattle of Bones, yeah. there's so many of them, I get muddled up. Rattle of Bones is, Rattle of Bones is very much this claustrophobic crowd. You're in this, this, it's nighttime, you're in this dodgy place in the middle of nowhere, and you, you, your companion may or may not be a dangerous person as well. And all of this, you know, there's, a, there's a skeletons and nonsense. It's very much, it's almost like a little horror film yeah. short. Mm -hmm. Whereas Red Shadows is this massive Sunday afternoon matinee, swashbuckling, Falling, sprawling, yeah. <laughs> Michael Bay explosions, kind of, you know, this great sort of romp across, across continents. Yeah. Um, and it's trying to say that sometimes it's like that, sometimes it's like this, and find that kind of yeah. balance. So when we, to go back to something we mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. when we have... Uh, an original that we've got the whole story, we have to try and weave extra paths in right yeah. that, to, to try, that will fit and make sense and fit narratively in. in and there's a lot of the times, it's very good because lots of the time he gives you hooks, mm -hmm. he gives you things that we sort of mention he's something. He's a very and descriptive then, writer, he lo lots of little details. And there's lots of bits that he'll mention something. So I mean, when we've got, um, when, we've, when we're talking about Red Shadows, one of the aspects in that is there's a bit in the story, Red Shadows, where he says, Something like um, R R Kane is talking to Lalu, and he's saying, "You know, there was the time when, uh, when you almost caught me, and I was jumping out the back in, in Venice. I was jumping out yeah, the back yeah, window when, absolutely. when I was kicking. You know, you were kicking in the front yeah. door, and that's all he mentions about the chase in Venice. We've made a whole act out of it, <laughs> <laughs> and, and that kind of thing. So, we, but, but again, at the same time, we, we ended up with some of them where they're just completely made up. No, there is nothing." Yeah. From from uh, from Howard. So there's two two of those that spring to mind. One of them is Haunted Mountain, mm -hmm. and the other one is uh, Ogre. Yeah. Ogre. Uh, and they both came about because I was researching the period, and I discovered that I discovered um, a a local because he's in the Black Forest in several of the yeah. stories. I was looking at lo Black Forest legends from that that kind of time, and there is a, a, a late medieval German stories and, and folklore around that time about monks putting ghosts in bags oh, so to, to, um, to sort of seal them away and make them safe. And I thought, that's such a bonkers story. I had to do something with that. So I sort of wrote the original idea of that. And then Mark, who's a, 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 a story writer who comes with it, works with us, he's, he took that on and then... Story writer, we have to bring, bring on board just for yeah, the I mean, of this project. <laughs> you have no idea. We've written kind of Lord of the Rings amounts of text for this. There's just hundreds of thousands of words. It's enormous. In a single language, that's before we even... That's in a single language. Before, yeah, before we translate it. Um, <laughs> anyway, so he was... He was um, I started off with the idea, I, I kind of did the research, came up with the idea, we kind of kicked it around with this, he wrote a, a big, bigger, the guys took it on, and I think it was Nick did most of this, took it on and then made it into the story, into the game, and then did all that. So that was made of me finding this kernel, this odd yeah. bit of, and, and Logo was again a similar thing, I was doing research on that, and I, uh, I was thinking about different kinds of creatures we could, we could have, uh, because you get kind of the sort of hint of, the Beast of Bordeaux is yeah. kind of built on, on um, similar kind of legends. That the, the, the French seem to have real fondness for, vamp for <laughs> around that period for giant wolves romping around, maybe being <laughs> werewolves kind of stories. There's quite a few of them. Um, anyway, Loga, uh, ogre is a word that appears in the language around that time. For the first time. Oh, for the first time, it appears. It, it's, that word is, a, is coined at that time. And I thought, well, why would it be coined? <laughs> Who would come up with this word? Ah, and I thought, that's oh, so that's a good idea. And then I kind of came up with the story from there. Yeah. And, and so that kind of thing, where, where, and then, you know, I come up with the original idea, Mark develops it, then one of the guys in the team takes that and start, and then everybody kind of pitches in and, and so on. So it kind of goes through lots of hands. Yeah. But the original idea can come from any, you know, quite a small little, yeah. little kernel. But whether we are doing a story that we made up from scratch or whether we are doing a story that is based entirely on 
one of the finished works from Robert Howard. We try and make it that there's never one way through. There's always a number of paths and they interwine and interweave and, and some of them diverge. Them. And, and instead, we try and find what's natural for that yeah. story. And I think the thing that really jumps out to me with this is that a year ago when we first launched the Kickstarter back in June, I think we were talking about scenes and chapters mm. and acts and how they fit into mm. adventures. And I think only now I think we're really, really able to kind of dictate it and tell people just what that involves because one act and another act can be so it can different, be very different yes. in terms of narrative, in terms of setting, in terms uh, of in, choices. In number of scenes, number of kind of physical yeah. kind of locations. It's not just two scenarios of the same game or two missions. No, no, no. It no, is no, completely no. different feelings, completely unique characters every time, completely different stories every time. So with all the different adventures we're going to have, there's going to be not just replayability, but so much variety in there. That's right. And, and, and I mean, you, you try and, again, you, you've got to try and balance this with a a sense of familiarity for the players so that they, they feel like they're playing the same game, yep. which you get because you've got Solomon Kane, you've got the virtues it's with him, you've got, you, well, they're always there, yeah. but that's your, that's your constant. Mm -hmm. Everything else yeah. is up for grabs. The air miles the virtues must get. Going oh, Africa, absolutely, America, yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, well look, thank you, Jake. I'm, I'm going to get the yeah. team in. And I'm okay. going to pick their brains and ask them how it's been for them because I, I, from everything you've said, I can't imagine there haven't been learning experiences and exciting oh, ups yes. and downs for I'm everybody. Sure. I'm sure. Cool. Yes. Well, thank you so much. Let's get Again. the guys and have a chat. Okay, so I'm joined in studio by one of our lesser known game developers, actually, possibly someone that you might not have heard of that much because we keep them under wraps. <laughs> we are prettiest game developer. Don't tell Babison okay. I said that. So I guess, would you like to tell us who you are yeah. and what your role is at Mythic Games? Yep. Hi, all. I'm Nick. I'm the newest addition to the development team of Mythic Games and Solomon Kane, yeah. more more specifically. Uh, so you're a game developer. That yeah, is yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all encompassing that's day in day out. Exactly. Yeah. That, that is that is your main role. Yeah. So obviously you kind of jumped in uh, under Jack's kind of leadership, but you've been working with yeah. the, other, the other guys as well. So I wanted to kind of have a bit of a conversation with you about um, how, how the experience has been, first of all. So when we're talking about dealing with such a, a big project. Yeah, like, it's, like it's, Kane, it's massive, yeah. Yeah, like, well, has there been any big highlights for you over the past year uh, that stood out? Yeah, the, the first thing that certainly st stands out for me is uh, my colleagues here at Mythic Games. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the thing that really, the thing that I really love about the company is how passionate everybody is, or is about yeah. what we're doing. I, I also grumpy, very very grumpy here. He's being awfully nice. <laughs> Sometimes we're really grumpy. We are all grumpy. <laughs> I mean, I mean, game developing yeah. is essentially arguing with other people <laughs> what you believe is the is the best solution to any problem. So yeah. So but the creativity and the passion is there. Yes. But you have to be willing to fight your case at times. Yeah, yeah, but. Yeah, I mean, it's something that many people took for granted. Yeah. But it's not it's not it's not that because I have done this work for several years now and it's not something that you took for granted about when you know when you work in the industry. Yeah, that's that's great. I love to, I love to hear that because yeah, it's yeah. it's easy to think cuz you forget sometimes just how uh, design oriented game development can be, yes. how creative um, it is and be able to passionately engage yourself but not yeah. bash heads with people or not have be able to not lose that energy. Yeah. Uh, it's absolutely something not to take for granted. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. So we're celebrating, essentially, uh, the 100th What's Up Wednesday wow. for Solomon Kane. So that's every single week we've had a, a new update from you guys. It's, yeah. it's nearly always really coming from uh, the game development team, unless I swoop in and steal the limelight. Yeah. Is there any big one that's kind of stood out for you over the past year? Uh, that might sound strange, but my favorite one yeah was the was on Wednesday that we actually announced about our decision to delay the game because we want to... What? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Be one. Bec because we want to work more on the game. Yeah. Uh, we want to... We don't want to cut corners. Yeah. You know, the easiest path is to say, okay, this is what we can do in this time period mm -hmm. and that's the best thing that we can do yeah. and just wash our hands. Yeah. But we didn't do that. We didn't do that. Yeah. From, so from a developer's point of view, actually, I, yeah, because now, now you've got me thinking as you've said that. I imagine yeah. that was kind of a bit of relief to say, actually, we don't want to put something that's kind of not as good as we can make it. We want to get that time. And when yes. we kind of said, yes, do you know what? We're going to take that kind of little bit of risk. We're going to say, we're going to invest the time in it. Yeah. That I can understand how that would have made you feel good. That's awesome. Yeah, because I, I believe this is the point of WhatsApp Wednesdays, yeah. keeping our bikers, you know, informed Absolutely. and involved in the, yeah. in the whole process. Yeah. 
Cool. And um, well, I mean, looking back, so the Kickstarter obviously finished back in July yep. uh, last last year. Um, is there any like, when you look back, and obviously it's hard to because you're doing this every single day. Yep. But is there any big thing that has evolved, or anything that stood out, or something that's been added in, or any significant change to the game where you're like, this thing I just love in it, this thing that's now in Solomon Kane? Yeah. Uh, the strongest aspect of the game, I believe, is that uh, how focused it is on the story, on the narrative, mm -hmm. and the experience. Yeah. I believe this is this is the thing that uh, stands out for for me, and I believe it will stand out hopefully yeah. for everyone that will play the game. Yeah. You know, every time you sit down to play, uh, even we that we do it to see things and play test and see balances and stuff like that. Even we, when we sit down to play, every time the game tells a story mm -hmm. that we remember. Yeah. I believe this is this is my. I have heard hooting and hollering uh, from outside when you guys yeah. are playing testing at times when yeah. things are going <laughs> for or against you. So I, I, yeah. that's awesome. Is there any particular uh, Robert E. Hard story or fragment or anything that was particularly challenging or particularly rewarding mm. uh, to, to work with? Any story that's a favorite for yours for you? My favorite story. There are two different things. My favorite yeah. act uh, from the game yeah. might be the. Death Black Riders one, okay, because it's very. It seems to be a fan favorite among the, among the entire team. Actually, it seems to be one that we had a lot of flexibility with, and you guys maybe yeah. got to be a bit creative with. Yeah, because it it, it has there different reasons. One one of the reasons is that the development went really smoothly, mm -hmm. and everything just seemed to fall into place yeah. by itself. And then at the end, we have a knack that it is really versatile and uh, really smooth and really, it, it has some very unique elements yeah. in there. But of course, each act has yeah. unique elements. And this is one of the things that makes this game such a massive project. Yeah, and the Deathbacks Riders one's another example of the good use of the What's Up Wednesday, because it's one where you guys kind of said, we don't really need all these minis as Death Flags Riders anymore. Yeah. We actually think having a mountain Solomon Keen would yeah. be more interesting. And we made that decision, because obviously this is the, one of the big advantages by taking the game initially and developing over time with support and input from the backers yeah. and, and bringing them along in the development yes. process. And if you haven't seen that, or if you don't back the campaign, or if you haven't noticed, we did make a decision to say, we're going to take one of the Death Flags Black Riders out, I'm going to put in a brand new skull Solomon of Kane. Solomon Keen yeah. mounted, because it felt right from a gameplay perspective. Yes. And that's just part of what we want to embrace as a company, creatively, uh, creatively, 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 <laughs> <laughs> creatively. Um, as, uh, we're filming just after UK Games Expo. Yes. Guys, the, the old, the old <laughs> this is our voice, isn't it like are, that? Are, yeah. are rough. Um, and and that, that, that process of being designed as we go, I think, is, is a huge advantage. And I think it's, it's really nice even for me to have the weekly updates and read what's been happening with the game development, yeah. what's new, what's slightly changing, what's adding that, that flavor in, and what have we taken from the backers and the Kickstarter commenters and the people who have played it at shows or who have been watching the Let's Plays yes. and what have we then added in. So yeah, the whole the whole process of that is, is great. It is. It so is. I think something I want to ask um, is with the game, you obviously play test a lot and yeah. when you're, there's a few different ways you can play the game, but do you have a favorite virtue? Do you have or a favorite character? Do, whenever, do you find yourself leaning one way or the other when favorite you play the game? Virtue. Uh, we, we are making jokes about that a lot, you yeah. know, because we are four okay. people that oh, we are actually, yeah, yeah. and we have, uh, we have now our virtues. Well, you can a, tell me, you can, in a you sense. Can tell me, because this, actually, <laughs> well, do you know what, actually, this is, a, this is a kind of, I didn't tell you I was going to say this, but let's t tell me who the four are, and I'm going to see if everyone corroborates your story. So, <laughs> J Jake's favorite, Jake's actually is uh, Prudence. I would have said Justice for Jake. No, oh, Justice Prudence. is Dale. Okay, okay. Justice okay. is Dale. Yeah. Bobby's is Temperance. Okay. And I am Karat. You're Karat. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I, I am the most, you know, straightforward, boring guy. <laughs> You're the one that breathes and stands up for your yes. belief in the way you think it should be done. Yeah. Um, that's great. Uh, you know I'm going to have to ask the other guys that now. We're going to see if yeah. all, the, all the developers think the same thing. I'm pretty sure I... I <laughs> oh, I'm curious now. I'm curious. Well, look, thank you so much, Nick. I guess, yeah. is there any message you'd like to give to backers? Or is there any story or fragment or anything you're, you're saying when you get the game, or if, or if you want to late pledge for the game, because you still can, um, right up until, sort of, I think it's like going to be October this year, so check that, and right throughout this year, we're going to have the late pledge open. Um, is there any particular act or message or anything you say, go and try that out, this is the one that's going to really blow your mind, or here's the thing, when, it, when you get someone keen, is there a message you want to give people? Uh, I just want to say that try to enjoy the game, and we are really anxious to, to hear back from yeah. you about your stories, yeah. what stories that the game 
will tell you mm -hmm. because it, every time it will tell a different story cool. that you play the game. Fantastic. We love to hear those stories. That's great. Thank you so much, Nick. Well, Thank I'm you very I'm much. I'm going to get the other guys in. We're going to have a chin mark with them and I'm going to check their answers. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I've wrangled another one of the Solomon Cain game development team. Can you please introduce to everybody at home, just in case they're not backers, they don't know who you are. Who are you, sir, and what do you do? Hello, everyone. My name is Dale. I am one of the developers on Solomon Cain, working alongside Babis, Jake, and Nick. Spoilers, Babis might be here later. <laughs> ladies, ladies, get your handkerchiefs up there ready. Um, awesome, thank you for coming in. I'm very sorry to pull you guys away of that den of spiderweb stories <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. and cards and everything yeah. you guys have going on there. But it's What's Up Wednesday 100. Mm -hmm. It's not the first time, of course, we've had What's Up Wednesday 100 um, for Joan of Arc before this, and even Mythic Battles Pantheon before that. But mm -hmm. we thought we would take a bit of a time, because Solomon Cain's gone through so much in the last year. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, so much has happened that we would have a bit of a chinwag with you guys about what's happening. And I guess I'm going to start, Dio, by asking you, do you have a favourite What's Up Wednesday now we're kind of hitting the triple digits? Yeah, absolutely. It would be the update where we revealed the Solomon Cain on horseback miniature. Oh man, this seems to be a fan favourite. I mean, uh, you guys love the Death Black Riders, you guys have yeah. a real feeling for that. Why was that such a big thing for you? It's because w the reason that miniature came to life, because yeah. we found during development that Solomon chasing a uh, horseman on foot, yeah. you had to suspend your disbelief quite a bit. Oh, okay. And okay. so we, we just presented the idea of Solomon Cain should be on horseback, mm -hmm. yeah. and the rest is history. So it was, a, it was an actual game development feeling. It just, yes. you played it, put it on the table, something that you couldn't really have initially realized when you were kind of thinking about it, but as soon as you put it on the table, yeah. and we're moving around a board, it just wasn't feeling right. Absolutely. We, we have a scene where Solomon has to chase these horsemen down, yeah. and doing it on foot would be pretty epic. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. And like, obviously, so that's just an example of one small change of what's happened, but you've obviously been with us right since the beginning. I mean, mm -hmm. the original Kickstarter finished uh, right back in July mm -hmm. last year. So. From that time till now, is there any big thing or anything that's been introduced, any big change? If, if someone was coming and learning about Solomon Cain now versus what they saw a year ago, yeah. is there anything that stands out to you? I, I, if someone new came in, I would go with the virtues. Yeah. We've we really spent a lot of time developing all virtues, mm -hmm. um, not including providence and darkness as well. We've yeah. given a lot of time to those. Because they're their individual own. Mm -hmm. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Um, but each virtue now has a really distinct deck, mm -hmm. which, which layer and overlap with each other. Yeah. And so it really feels like a cooperative game now. Mm -hmm. and, it's, and so you've built on that asymmetry. Yes, of exactly. Four completely different virtues that Absolutely. all kind of tie in together. And then for anyone that doesn't really know, I mean, it's worth kind of talking about this a little bit, is that Solomon Cain will come with a fully cooperative mode that you can play with one, two, three, four players. Mm -hmm. But it will also have its own unique uh, solo mode where you play with Providence, who is, well, you, you can maybe describe Providence better than I can. Mm -hmm. what, does she, what does she do in the game? What's her? Um, she has a lot of things going on. She can... Um, store light mm -hmm. and use it as a wild wild dice yeah, okay. phase. Um, she, she plays very quickly compared to the virtues. Yeah. Because she, she's designed for solo play. Right? Exactly, so yeah. you, you can kind of make more flow decisions without having to have the discussion, mm -hmm. first of all, yeah. Uh, and to be honest with you, w when I get the game and I take it home and I play with my partner, we, we that's, that's already a good sign. <laughs> that you're there after, because I know from speaking to Jeff earlier that you guys have had to play a lot of these stories several, several times to explore all the paths and every mm -hmm. little tweak to not just the core rules, yeah. but the initial rules that you put in through them. So if you're still like, when I get the game, I'll take a look yeah. at it, that's going to be as exciting to me. Uh, honestly, like, when I take it home, I'll be playing Providence versus Darkness, yeah. like that 1v1 mode. Cool. Ah, so also you play it with your partner? Yeah. Awesome. So, because yeah, that's the other mode then. So you mm -hmm. have, you have the, the, the one, two, three, four player mode of the stamped game. You have the solo mode with Providence. Then you have the darkness mode, which you can play either 1v1 Providence Darkness. Exactly. Or you could also play the virtues themselves. There is no core virtues going up against darkness. Exactly. Um, yeah. That's just <laughs> <makes me laughs> There's so much. Yeah, yeah. Because like, it, it's going to suit uh, a lot of different people in a lot of different ways, I think. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so to come back to the stories a little bit, and obviously we're talking about Sonny Cain, we're talking about Robert E. Hard. Was there any kind of story or fragment or anything in particular that you find challenging or anything one that was very rewarding for you to work on? Um, developing the Red Shadow story mm -hmm. was, was difficult. Yeah. For example, in the final act of that story, if people are familiar with, with the story, um, Solomon is actually captured and he's tied to a stake. Mm -hmm. And so turning that into gameplay yeah. it was a good, a good challenge. Yeah. And w what we did was is we... For example, there's a scene where Solomon has to argue with Lilu, his arch nemesis. Yeah, yeah, we know Lilu very well, yeah. And so what we did was, is we, we zoomed out of the scene mm -hmm. and we had it like a bit of a Harry Potter versus Voldemort <gasps> battle thing where, oh my word. do you know in the scene where the casting... The jill jilling wands? Yes, exactly. It, oh. it, but we turned that into a verbal battle. Yeah. And so we have a token that moves back and forwards depending on who's 
performing the better I talk. I didn't even know this. <laughs> I'm getting yeah. excited because that's exactly because there's such a verbal conflict exactly. between them in the book. There's a real kind of one-upsmanship. Exactly. Over, yeah. You missed me sneaking out the window. Mm -hmm. I saw you setting seeds. Yeah. Like, yeah, we didn't catch me, but I did. I was this close. Mm -hmm. Like, there's a real verbal lash. Yeah. That's so cool. And so we're pushing a token back and forwards, and yeah. and Solomon wins by pushing this token onto Lulu yeah. in the Voldemort type of battle Essentially, thing. Essentially, like just winning yeah. that battle of wits yeah. outside of the table. Exactly. Because that, that's another thing that we should t touch into a little bit, of course, is that it's not all swashbuckling. It's no. not all adventures. It's not all challenges. There's a lot of that kind of feeling of narrative, of that decision making, of that I know I can't do everything in the time I have, mm -hmm. so who am I going to speak to or what routes am I going to explore? Absolutely. Um, which is another reason why we took kind of so long and why every What's Up Wednesday means so much because we do share everything that's really going on in the development. And I think when people see just how far the game has come to how it was right back at the Kickstarter in, mm -hmm. in June last year, I think it's going to really be an incredible, I agree, incredible yeah. reveal. So when we talk about all the acts and the adventures and scenes, obviously it was something that we kind of initially put forward the Kickstarter last year. Now we're starting to get a fuller picture of what really is a scene, what, what are multiple mm -hmm. chapters, what are multiple acts. And all of these adventures have their own unique characters that are brought in. Do you have a favourite character or, or a favourite story, personally, that that, that character appears, appears in? Um, my my favourite character uh, is Jack Hollister. Okay. And his the Blue Flume of Vengeance. Yeah, Blue Flume of Vengeance. His miniature has a really cool pose. Yeah. And it, it almost gives off his naivete as well. Mm -hmm. And in the story, he, the players can level him up. Yeah. He, he has three different states. He has a very... Um, wet behind the ears. Okay. Then it, throughout that three-act adventure, he grows up to be a stronger fighter. That's awesome. And it's a bit like a video game with a level-up system. Yeah. By the end of the adventure, he might be equal to Sol McCain, mm -hmm. almost in power. Wow. But okay. may, maybe not quite. Not but yet. you can sit, yeah. you you can level him up. Yeah. That's that's really interesting. So both from a game design and also from a story aspect, there you get to try to link that mm -hmm. together, make that feel right. Yeah. Because when you do meet him at the start of the Avengers, he's kind of all hot blooded and rash. Exactly. And just dives in without so much care for himself and thinking it through. And it is mm -hmm. Solomon who kind of steps in. So it's interesting to see that the players will now have a little bit of control over how much Solomon kind of influences yeah. that development. And I don't want to give too much away, but maybe that might bite the players. <laughs> oh, oh, no. oh, okay. That, I see. I'm mm -hmm. more excited now. Um, what about virtues then? Do you have a, a favourite virtue that you like to play? Yeah, Justice is my favourite. Yeah. Um, it, she's a monster at placing light, yeah. um, which is helpful in stories. But I guess as simple is that she's holding the scale of scales of justice there. You just like the which, which, just which really. as a Libra, yeah. it's it's a it's an obvious match. So. That's, that's wicked. <laughs> now, I, Nick gave something away to me that I didn't actually even know at all. Mm. Apparently, each of you in the team, so Jack, uh, Nick, yourself, and mm -hmm. Mavis, have assigned each other kind of jokingly <laughs> virtues. Yeah. And I want to see if. You the ones that Nick said match up with the ones that you said. It, of course, there's Prudence Thornton. <laughs> Prudence Thornton? So that's Jake, yeah, right? Yeah. Okay. And Nick would be Courage. Nick is Courage, okay. Bab is Temperance and myself, Justice. Mm, that's exactly what Nick said. Yeah. Okay, okay, we're going to see him back and chip Babis up on that. Um, so I guess, you know, obviously we're 100 weeks uh, of updates kind of deep now, essentially. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, minus the, the campaign updates, of course. We're, we're, we're a year. Um, through the development. If there was kind of like a final message or an exciting thing you had to leave a backer or even if someone wants to late pledge, if they're a potential backer and they're curious about the game, is there anything you say, look, do this first or check out this adventure or this is something that you'd love to see the players get their hands on? Anything that excites you? T to be honest, when the game gets released, I'm going to be scouring all the forums, reading all the reviews mm -hmm. because I'm, I'm interested in the feedback about everything. Yeah. However, if you pushed me on one, I would yeah. maybe say Foot Falls Within, okay. which is one of our add-on yeah. uh, adventures. And of course, that's a really cool boss battle with the Red Horror. The Red Horror. Oh, um, yeah. But personally, for me, it also deals with the theme of slavery, mm -hmm. which is really interesting. Sure. And of course, Solomon himself in the story gets yeah. captured. Yeah. And ha ha the, the question is, the developers, how we turn that into gameplay is really interesting. Yeah. So that, that sounds like a very tough, actually I'm thinking about a really tough thing on paper mm -hmm. to turn into something that, that's both fun and challenging, but puts you in a, in, a, in a threatening and threatened position and having to, to pick your moment mm -hmm. well as, as a character and yeah. not just play the, the Conan barbarian kind of charging in, you are playing someone who Ex is vulnerable. Exactly. In the story, Solomon is overwhelmed by the amount of slavers yeah. and he can't just go in all guns blazing, he has to pick out his moment yeah. and so it's a lot of following and trying to climb up hills to get advantage point. It, cool. It's very interesting. Fantastic. So I'll be looking forward to see people's feedback on that one. Awesome. Thank you, Dale. Well, look, thank you so much, guys. We're going to go ahead and get Babis in line. We're going to pick his brain, see if he can get all the virtue names right. I'm really <laughs> something gets it wrong. <laughs> thank you. No, thank you.
Okay, to end our celebrations, we've saved the best to last. If you're, if you're a backer and you're reading our, our regular What's Up Wednesdays, you're absolutely going to know this gentleman. But just in case they're on YouTube or Facebook or they haven't backed and they don't know who you are, can you please introduce yourself and tell us what you do at Mythic Games? Sure thing, yeah. Hi, guys. My name is Babis Giannias, and I'm a game developer at Mythic Games, working on Solomon Kane along with the rest of the guys and the team. There you go. Now, now you know Babis, and that's the most important thing. If you're going to take away anything, this is Babis. <laughs> <laughs> that's me. <laughs> so I brought you in, obviously, I interrupted your very, very, very busy day because we're celebrating the 100th What's Up. Yay, I, d I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> we've, we've had it before with Mythic Battles and Joan of Arc, but I think this time Solomon Kane is a game which has had every update has had something in it, whether it's yes. tiles or story or elements. There's always been something in there for people to get excited about. Yeah. And if you've been backing every single Wednesday, our Discord chat's always like, when's it coming? When's the What's Up Wednesday of Solomon Kane coming? What are we going to find out? So I wanted to find out, first of all, do you have a favourite? Have you got a What's Up Wednesday that kind of stands out of them all to you that's like, I like that one a lot? Um, yes, I do have a favorite, okay. my favorite one, and it is the revelation of darkness. Okay. Yeah. Oh, hold on. No, that's that's great because I know <laughs> you and I both know we played some let's plays of Solomon Kane together way back in the day, and we know that you like a little bit of darkness. Yeah. Things. Well, but I, I really I really enjoyed the uh, revealing stuff about darkness, and it actually was Jake that revealed the entire thing mm -hmm. about how darkness plays out. Yeah. He didn't say much, but then again, we have more things to reveal later on in the future. And yeah, uh, my heart was pounding at that moment because I really wanted to say more and more things yeah. about the, the majestic lady that is, of that darkness. Is that that, that is brings darkness. the competitive gameplay in. Essentially. Is that how you'll play the game, do you think, whenever you get it? Definitely, definitely. definitely. I always enjoy to have a, a competitive side to my cooperative games. That's so good. Yeah. I, I didn't realize that. But so, are you going to be playing as Darkness? Yeah. That's Some of the not, times. Not, yeah. not to be surprised <laughs> at all, really. And um, so, obviously, you've been with us from the very beginning, like yeah. right back in sort of June, July last year when, yeah. when we ran the Kickstarter initially. If there was like one big thing that's changed, if there was one thing that kind of stood out for you as where Sonic can come from to where it is now, or pay attention to this, or if you're brand new looking at Sonic, is there anything in particular you'd say, this is the cool thing that we've been developing? Yeah, um, the the coolest thing about um, developing Solomon Kane is actually developing the branching paths that the game offers, yep. and this is the, the the most exciting and intense and enjoyable part of that. Yes. Uh, we really loved building the world of Solomon Kane and providing the different ways to um, dip, um, so uh, we provided different ways to tell the scenarios, yes. and we actually we would introduce scenes in, by a different lens, mm -hmm. through a different lens. Yeah. And it was, it was really, really exciting and enjoyable. Mm -hmm. Taking these little creative tidbits that Robert E. Howard puts in, these little, like, little mentions of a location or a person or an action, and then exploring those seems to be a big part of what you guys are doing day to day. Yeah, we stayed true to that. Yeah. We really wanted to uh, maintain the integrity of the text, mm -hmm. and we wanted to make sure that the players did feel the same uh, uh, by playing the game mm -hmm. as by reading the novel. Yeah, and that, that to me is so exciting, right? Because yeah. I know a lot of people who backed our campaign went out and bought the books immediately, but they're really only going to have like a quarter or a third of the information by the time they sit down to play one of the adventures that they've read a story or a fragment about. They might even have less than that if it's a couple of page fragment because you guys have done so much. Precisely. Um, is there uh, a particular fragment or a particular story that was either sort of rewarding or challenging or engaging for you as a developer that you really liked getting into? Yeah, for me, it's definitely um, the add-on of uh, vampires, against the vampires. Now, that doesn't surprise me as well, <laughs> because if anyone, any people out there are avid Kickstarter backers, you'll have seen Babas involved recently in an awesome Kickstarter for Vampire, yeah. uh, for, the, for the board game of Heritage, right? Yeah. Uh, where he also got to do some acting, which was um, so that doesn't surprise me actually that the vampires yeah. interest you. But what yeah. about it in terms of Solomon Kane? Was yeah. really good. It's a, it's a it's a really unique and intriguing uh, add-on because it offers a, a a rather exciting story that makes you and uh, makes the players mm -hmm. feel that Solomon Kane is actually the prey. Ooh, okay. So when Solomon Kane delves into the vampire kingdom mm -hmm. of the um, uh, Nagari, yeah. he finds himself hunted. By, by a force that's not that that cannot be understood and comprehended, and this uh, entire mystery takes shape in the form of Queen Nakari. Okay. She's 
She's uh, both sultry yet innocent, mm -hmm. devious yet uh, reasonable, and it's that intelligence that's threatened. Yeah, that it's level. yeah precisely. It's that kind of intelligence that elevates the gameplay experience, yeah. and. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't want to say more, but yeah. <laughs> so this, this is the thing, and every game developer, when we've been sitting down talking, <laughs> you can see that you guys want to get in and talk about the stories, but you also don't want to spoil because yeah. if you've read the stories, if you've yeah. bought the books, you've still only got a little bit of what yeah. you guys have yeah. actually done. Expect the Puritan to be hunted a lot in that. So that's it, that'll be in the Against the Vampires expansion, if that is something you're interested in, that, that you'd have to go down that way for, for that kind yeah. of part. Um, and I suppose, so obviously that's kind of... Uh, a story in particular, but is there a particular character, a particular moment or scene or anything that stands out for you? Is there a character that just you were like, I had a lot of fun with, or are you like the mini of it? Yeah, um, I would have I, I would have said uh, Matthew Hopkins. Okay, the, the witch hunter general? The, the, the witch yeah, hunter. the witch finder yeah. general. Yeah. Um, I, I really like his miniature, mm -hmm. but first and foremost, I really like his attitude in the game. Mm -hmm. He, if you're familiar with the story, he knows that he, he has the same dedication that Solomon Cain has, yeah. but his mind is a bit off. Mm -hmm. So uh, the way that he plays is quite interesting, and he tries to taint Solomon Cain's mind oh. as well. Expect, expect to be doubted mm -hmm. in, when you play the Witchfinder General expect to second guess mm -hmm. your I initial hunches yeah. expect expect the unexpected i'd oh, say yeah. that's so cool. <laughs> but it's, it's so interesting to have a character whose like general purpose kind of does align with someone but his way he goes about it and how he approaches it and the way that his mind works being different yeah that's an yeah. awesome little yeah and uh, as well the way that you see him moving on the map will make your heart pound wow that's that's incredible yeah that's, it's intense. That's so cool. What an interesting tip. That actually, <laughs> I, I, I haven't actually had a chance to play with him yet. So like, I, all I know is after we're done filming, I, you guys need to set up some Solomon Cain for me yeah. because I'm absolutely dying. It's been far too long since I've had a chance to sit down and actually get a, an evening of Solomon Cain. It really has been. Um, <laughs> now, there's a question that kind of popped up a little bit as I was type chatting to the other guys mm -hmm. that I wasn't uh, planning on asking them. But Nick mentioned it, and then I had to ask Neil. When you personally play, otherwise we, we know you. We know you like darkness. Yeah. But is there a particular virtue of the four main ones? So temperance, courage, uh, prudence, and justice is the one that you like. The one that embodies you. Because I hear in the office that game devs kind of have a little bit of a joke going. The four of you, each one of you is a different virtue. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, that's true. Who, yeah. So who's who? Okay, <laughs> I'd say that myself. I'm temperance. Okay. Yeah, I'm not temperate as an individual, no. but I really like the mini. Okay. And I really like the notion of you know being temperate as a person, yeah. but I fail at that. But <laughs> <laughs> you aspire to be more like yeah, okay, yeah, true, good, yeah, you. true. It's a learning, it's a learning thing, it's a learning experience, yeah. I guess. And yeah, uh, Dale yeah. would be justice. Okay, interesting. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you can either confirm or deny that that's what the uh, other guys Okay, say, Nick is courage. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Jake is definitely prudence. <laughs> I, you, you all said exactly the same thing. Really? Yeah, you, you all did. You all nailed, nailed it. Because uh, and obviously you've been working on the game for a year now, developing yeah. it together. You guys have played dozens upon dozens upon hundreds of, of different playtests and, and, and development of the game. Uh, it doesn't surprise me that I guess you've all come to, to that point. I don't know if I would have gone that way. I think I would have had you as courage. I would have thought you would have been at the front lines, really? forward, <laughs> leading everyone, inspiring everyone to go through. I thought Jake would have been a bit more temperate. Uh, I would guess I think prudence would have been maybe been deal. I would mm -hmm. think deal's just going to go that reserve, kind of making sure everything's being done carefully. But it makes it, it makes perfect sense the way you guys have put it. And I'm so glad that you've kind of found <laughs> these little these little niches. L let, let me only say as that we've become a family. I mean, we've been working so much together. I mean, I've been working for the company for a year, mm -hmm. and I'm I I've. I'm actually so bored watching your faces. <laughs> no, I'm only, I'm only joking. I'm, I'm, I'm only, I'm only, yeah. Uh, but it's funny you, when you look at things like Marvel, you look at things like Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings. These people, where, where people have their lives, like eight years or something, their lives dedicated, and they, they, they become their family. You True. guys are locked in a room, you know, at least locked together, side by yeah. side for so yeah. four or five days yeah. a week. Yeah. Um, 
day in day out, you've been doing it for a year now. Yeah. Um, and of, of course, we've taken that little bit of an extra time. We've, we've not gone with the initial uh, estimated uh, shipping date we originally went for. We are looking at the start of 2020 now. And um, so by giving you that extra time, you're able to delve into it more. And Nick talked about how much that was actually a bit of relief for him so that you guys could really get in and not skimp on all the details yeah, you're doing. We're so passionate. Yeah. We really want to do that correctly. Yeah. We, don't want, uh, we don't want to fail any, mm-hmm. anybody. Be still my beating heart. <laughs> well, look, thank you so much for coming in, Dallas, first Thank of all. you so much for it. having me. Um, look, thank you, everyone at home. Look, whether you're a Kickstarter backer and whether you're just watching this and to kind of be part of the Mythic Games community, you can come on Facebook, you can come on our Kickstarter updates. They're pretty much all available to everyone, whether you back the Kickstarter or not. So you can read our updates every single Wednesday where the game developers themselves for all of our games and the community and everyone gets involved and has intimate discussions about what we're doing with the game and how it's evolving. Uh, the late pledge for Solomon Kane is still open at the moment, so if you, you do want to go in uh, and amend your, amend your existing pledge, or you want to, if you're going brand new to this and you'd like to late pledge, you can still do that now. And it's really a, a pleasure for me, because uh, very often with the business and how, how quickly the world goes and the forcing work, I also get to enjoy reading the updates as well, because I often am get, get getting the tidbits from there about what's happening and this sit down process chatting to you guys now has only made me want to play the game even more and I'm absolutely jumping at the bit now so you guys are in trouble I'm going to warn you right now that I don't <laughs> care Gen Con's coming or can you Kickstarters are coming you guys gotta, better get ready to uh, let me play some Solomon Kane yeah King sure let's play let's play more <laughs> Solomon Kane cool. thank you guys have a great time and uh, we really appreciate you watching thank you guys